or not. Hold on. There it is. <laughs> Oh, well, here we are again, guys, in studio recording today, Victoria and I. Uh, we're kind of switching gears from being behind the ranks to being in the ranks. As we are approaching May and Mother's Day, we wanted to take a little uh, different spin on an episode. Yeah, so we actually invited a mom on the show, and um, I'm just going to say the best mom in the whole wide world, my mommy. She's on the phone with us. And um, yeah, hi, mom. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome that you could join us today. Thank I you. Know. I'm super excited. Well, thank um, you. I know. So what's so cool, right? So like, I think we've talked about it in a few episodes, right? I'm a military brat, um, but my mom was active duty um, for 20 years. Well, actually probably more than 20 did you do 20 only? years it was yep. just 20 okay I thought you went over a little 20 bit. years eight days wow. however many is. hours <laughs> that go in. Awesome. um but I just thought like who better to talk about you know like being a mom and active duty in uniform other than my mom yeah my mom totally did it she racked it She's like the best in the whole That's world. That's right. Yeah, super. I rocked it. it. Super and rocked as it. a single parent too, for mm. a lot of the part. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot. I know. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's unreal. I know. And so now that I'm a military spouse, I'm like looking like, oh my gosh, how do you put on a uniform and be a mom? And I'm just like, no, I don't want any part of that. I don't want to. Do, I don't know how my mom yeah. did it, but it's so cool because like when you're in the military and so I mean like the military. You know, I grew up the military lifestyle. I knew I wanted to be in the military, right? <laughs> so I think you gave me that sense of like, yes, I love the military, but I don't want to be in it. <laughs> I want to be a mom. I don't mind supporting the military <laughs> member, but no, that I just wow, too hard, way too hard. I don't know how you did it, but I'm super happy you did because. I mean, it was such a great, I mean, it was just good for our family, and you stuck it out, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, plus the benefits. Um, you can't you can't deny the benefits that we all got from it. Yeah. But there's a lot of sacrifices, um, a lot of things that are different from being even a stay-home mom um, as a dependent, um, going through even starting from pregnancy time. I mean, we had to get up and go to work. Yeah. If we were sick, we had to go to sick call. We had to get, mm. we had to go see the doctor to say, okay, yeah, you can go home. You know, there wasn't just, uh, I'm, you know, I, I just can't do it and, you know, stay home for a day <laughs> and, sit, you know, and sleep or rest or whatever, especially through, uh, through the time of morning sickness and stuff. Yeah. But you, you have to just do it until you go through. And, you know, you definitely, uh, through the pregnancy time, you work right up to it. I know. You know, it's unless like you're going to take the leave. <laughs> that's like all the way right. I It's know. like, I mean, I was like pregnant with Mark, your brother, and I was standing getting my, um, one of my ranks, my A1C, and I was in labor having the commander. Oh, no way. <laughs> presenting me my stripes, you know. It was oh like, and it was funny, you know, because we're in the orderly room, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I was in labor, but I didn't really realize at the time I was in labor, you That's know, crazy. until you get later. So it was later that night when. You know, the, so at least the your water didn't break stuff. that day. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's oh like, gosh. so, you know, so you're right, you're working right up. And then, of course, you know, heaven forbid you have the swollen feet, you got all the other issues. I know. You got to get on boots, permission from the doctor to wear tennis shoes. Oh, yeah. So it, it, it's all this stuff, you you know, and what's it like wearing the maternity you, uniform? Well, the maternity uniform was very comfortable. Was it? Oh, I actually <laughs> I loved it. You know, it was. I was rock. in the. Well, it was the BDU one. I was. I tried. You know, if you could stay in the BDU uh, maternity all the time, it's awesome. That was comfortable. But the blues were okay too. But the the top was a little scratchy. But uh, you know, they were comfortable. They they allotted for the maternity and all that stuff. But then you know, now at the time when. Mark and you were well, actually you got the longer, but the, the maternity leave time off. I was only allotted four weeks, four of weeks. maternity time. Oh 
Wow. That's crazy. And then you get back to work. No. But I was kind of, you know, fortunate because my babies, they like to get sick. So <laughs> I was able to, <laughs> I was able I to stay longer. <laughs> like, well, what you know, sick? because <laughs> that's right, you know, because you guys had jaundice and other stuff, you know, each, each one of you had three. Okay. So each one had something going on when they were babies so I was on convalescent and then the maternity leave and then of course it got extended because of issues so I would actually have like nine weeks or something six to nine give and take whatever was going on with the child but you had to be by you had to be back under weight regulation oh, Lord. by 90 days after what? you know they gave you three months no, and if you no. were not at the weight, you were all put on the fat boy program. <laughs> That's so messy. And so, <laughs> so you're right here. They have you know, right the after sense, you right? Have, <laughs> Goodness. So right after you give birth to the baby, you give yourself a little bit. You got to start exercising again. You got to get back in there. And and then after the third child, you 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 know miraculously gain fifty pounds, and you're like, what yes. the heck? How did that happen? You know, each child, oh. you know, different. So, yeah. you know, and you're, you're trying you're like to lose expected. all that baby weight. Oh, Lordy. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 And so the then same? you're expected. No, I don't think it's the same anymore. But my poor mama, she had to go Aww. through it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, so it's a little different. It's different now because even the dads can take time off now. They get maternity leave now. I know. And um, they didn't have the baby that before. bonding time. Right. No, no. No, yeah. we did not. It so was that, mom, so got, mom had four weeks. And then, yeah, the dad, dad was, was a lot of no time. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Yep. Oh. And dad, you know, was doing the same thing. And so, but yeah, so those are the different times that you get. And then, you know, and then, of course, both of us were active duty, yeah. <clears throat> me oh. and her dad. Yeah. And so, you know, then it's like, okay, I got to go back to work. <clears throat> do I breastfeed or do I not? Okay, so then you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to pump, I'm going to do this. I wrapped up and strapped up, and I was like, you know, it's just yeah, too much. It is too much. So not like some now, their borrowing offices are able to pump and stuff. It wasn't that way. It wasn't as easy when, you know, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, you know. Yeah, but, don't um, my age here. <laughs> so I just put in that range. <laughs> so anyway. So, so then once you get through that, then you got to like find the babysitters and then it's like, okay, so I was very fortunate to find babysitters in the local community and they were God sent. Um, and then of course with meal to meal and we had exercises and of course, wouldn't you know it, me and her dad were always on mid shift. So thank God my babysitters took them all night that's so they crazy. would watch I them 24 hours <laughs> like, that's crazy. they would watch them 24 hours Aww. because we would work at night but have to sleep so you know cindy cynthia cindy vargas was their one babysitter that was awesome wow. and it's a good um, thing i don't remember this she <laughs> kept them yeah and so what i did was i had set up a whole nursery at their house they had play pins and you know cri- uh, cribs they had everything i had dual everything at you know my, our house and the babysitters wow so but then over time now the kids are growing up you know and then of course keep yeah. so you're moving so you're still then you got to find babysitters you got to figure out school where are they going to go after school daycare what you know so all this gets put at play and then, of course, now that you're a military person, I don't know about a lot of the, you guys that if you remember your military member, once that uniform goes on, it's a mask. They're, they're in mode. Yeah. They're in military member mode. Yes. So it's yeah. like the kids and Vicky and Mark, they all did really good. And then, of course, taught their younger brother, Kyle, that you got to give mom time to get out of that uniform yeah. and change gears from yeah. military person to mom. Yeah. Because if if I got hit with something, like somebody did something and I just came walking through the door, they got the military mom 
put punishment yeah. versus, you know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> waiting for sure. mom to. <laughs> yeah. <I'm laughs> not a nice mom. <laughs> you know, it's so, I'm going to take this. You know, like. <laughs> it's interesting that you bring that so, up. Because I was reading a bunch of um, articles yesterday and blogs yesterday when getting ready for today. And that was like the number one thing that they kept saying over and over again was trying to switch from, you know, military member to mom. Like going back and forth yeah. from that transition yeah. is the hardest, you know, yeah. most challenging thing for them. So I'm glad you brought that up. So continue. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And, and so it was a good 30 minutes. The kids would give me time so that I can you know, get out of the uniform, do whatever I needed to do, switch modes, figure out what's going on at home, um, mm. get a chance to maybe figure out, maybe start cooking dinner, then hit me with so-and-so did this to me, or this oh, happened, yeah. or mom, you know, it's like, so-and-so won't leave me alone. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I like know. I said, then through all this, I went through a divorce, and then I got married again, and then divorced again. So yeah, the, the kids were, they, I really, really counted on the kids as they got older, especially once Kyle, because Kyle was a 10 year, um, in between Vicky and him. Yep. And, uh, and then on top of it, he turns out to be diabetic, type one diabetic. Oh. So we, we got this little baby that yeah. whole life is soul survival is on us. Right. Yeah. Dad. You know, left a week after diagnosis and stuff. So he's, you know, moved out and done whatever, and we're not going to go there. But um, <laughs> that's another so podcast. <laughs> I'm really, yeah. So Vicky and Mark had to learn how to give shots and stuff. Yeah. So there, so there's this other dynamic. So now it's not only I'm a, a military mom, but I'm a medical provider. I have to do all this stuff. And then you've got all these other families that have these special needs. Yeah. Their kids need all this stuff. So now we're, we're dealing with more dynamics, especially when it's an active duty parent or yeah. both parents or back to a single parent. And, you know, and, and then there's times, you know, I wanted to get out every single enlistment that I had the chance, you yeah. know, but it's like, what would I going to do? Where would I go? Yeah. I, 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 can't like, I got get these out. medical bills got, that would be through yeah, the roof yeah, now, you know, like, or exactly. But. So you're like, okay, if I go back home, would, you know, would I really have the family support? Would I really have the, the care? And then put, what job? I didn't know. I wasn't even positioned yet because I hadn't done, um, done my uh, college yet. So I really started that about seven years or eight years out when I was, I took a class here and there throughout um, to start, you know, knocking out my education. But then when it got closer, I went full-blown college. And yeah. if it wasn't for Vicki and Mark, you know, I had, it was a good seven years I was really hitting the education. And then they, I really relied on the kids at that time because I couldn't have done it without the kids. Right. That must have been about the and same time uh, I got my driver's license and stuff. You know, like yeah. I could help out with that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying so, to remember. I'm like, you know, because it's a blur to me. You know, I mean, wow, you right. make it sound really traumatic, but to me, it was like a blur. You know, oh. I was like, you know, okay, it wasn't so bad. Let's add you know? more to the blur. Let's add more to the blur. Uh, <laughs> one years old, then I have to deploy. To I remember Kuwait. that. That oh. was nuts. So I'm gone for six months. So yeah. it's Vicky, Mark, the new baby, and dad. Yeah. Okay. So dad, you know, it was like, you know, and then Kyle gets, you know, that's when he got diagnosed um, with diabetes during that time. And then, um, no, he got roseola. Yeah. Uh, he was 18 months old yeah. when he got diabetes because uh, I was home by then. Yeah. And that was Christmas. So, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that, that was crazy. crazy. So, I mean, like, you deployed but, yeah. multiple times, even while, like, I was little, you know, and then, I mean, but I, yeah. I definitely remember when, the one when, like, you know, Kyle was like the young. I remember that one like a lot. Yeah, too. and then when me and your dad went in England, we both deployed at the same time. Yeah, oh my goodness. I super Vicky remember that. and I Mark know. had to stay with Brent. 
my coworker, yeah. and his family took them in. I know. I talked about this in, uh, I think, the first podcast, I think, with Kevin. Because I was like, Saint yeah. Bernard. Yes. You know, I was like, Bernard. Yeah. I was like, they didn't have any kids, um, <laughs> but they watched me and Marco, and I think maybe we were good birth control. <laughs> That's what I, think. I really do. I was like, they, 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 they oh my gosh. But yeah, they had like six or seven St. Bernards. It was insane. Oh you know, like, gosh. imagine the movie. Yeah, they bred. Yeah. Like, yeah. times. Six or seven. Yeah, they were breeders. These, these yeah, were nuts. Bernard breeders. That, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> they, oh my. they were ridiculous. Yeah. I feel so, like. But during all that, we had good times and bad times, you know, and it, the money too, was tight. So we would plan like one trip a month. And so we, we, we try to plan things um, so that we can do stuff and then save up the money. Yeah. And then that one time, um, well, right when I retired and I won that uh, drawing at the bowling alley and it was uh, a trip, I could pick a trip anywhere. So, of course, what's the normal thing? We're going to Disney World. Yeah. I always yes. promised the kids I would Aww. take them to Disney World, but I didn't know how, didn't know when, how I was going to save up the money. And then we won that trip, and that was the first thing I said, we're going to Disney World. Aww. Yeah, that was the best. Awesome. That was so fun. That was the best. Yeah, yeah that was great. I Definitely. F- I feel like we need to, like, yeah. find the applause button on oh, this roadcaster yeah. because just hearing all this, I'm, like, cheering for you silently. But I'm, like, where's the applause button? Because <laughs> we would be constant. <laughs> Yay! Yay! That is just I, amazing to I know. hear all of that. It is a little yeah. hard. Even for me, it's hard to wrap my head around. Yeah. Like, okay, hold on. My mind's, you know, like blown what was, right now. Right? So what was, because uh, I cannot imagine deploying. Okay, so, like, and leaving my kids for months like fo- how did you do it I mean you just do it right but like how okay. <laughs> well you're stressed oh, and okay. you know it, it's like the mental um because nobody wants to go and leave yeah. your kids right. right you're stressed out the whole time thank god where I was I was able to get up I called home every day but I could not talk to the kids oh yeah I had a hard time I would be. I don't. I don't even know. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know how to do, how to wrap my head around that. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I can't you imagine. Cry. I know. I, know. So I, I think Tori is crying too. <laughs> Dang it! Don't even make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking oh. and if that was hard. <laughs> Oh gosh! This is, okay, okay, we're gonna bring it back. Hold on. <laughs> okay. No, you're fine. We're this gonna is, get this it together. This is what it's all about, though. I mean, people don't realize on okay. the outside; they have no idea from yeah. the outside what yeah, it would be like. I don't. I can't even. Like I said, my mind is blown listening to all of this, and now, yeah, looking at Victoria well, and is. hearing you, I don't. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, it's in that time. That's when Kyle got roseola, and it was like okay. You could go home on emergency leave, but you got to come back. Oh, yeah. heck no. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay, my, my son is sick, and it's like, if I choose to go home on emergency leave, I got to come back. Okay, yeah. well, well, but like, there's no replacement for you. Yeah. So we can, and, and that was, so I couldn't, I, I chose not to go back because I couldn't do it. Right. Yeah, right, right. To I leave would not again. be able, Ugh. right? Yeah. I would not be able to get back on that plane. Yeah. Plus, right. the morning I had to leave, I couldn't even say goodbye to him. Yeah. I remember every time my <laughs> husband has left, and then that's the thing I always say I'm like, I just want you to like slip out. Like, um, Don't say goodbye. You know, the leaving, yeah. I think, is always the absolute worst, but I can't even imagine being. Being the, the mom. mom. <laughs> I know. I don't even like leaving like for work or like leaving for the day, like saying goodbye sometimes. I'm like, I'll see yeah. you in like seven hours. I but know. still. Yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't imagine. Yeah. I think crazy. I would do the same thing though. Yeah. I think if I was in your shoes, I don't think I would have been able to to go back and then have to leave all over again. Yeah, no, in such a short oh, time. Oh no, yeah, oh, no. you can't. You no. can't. 
Gosh, and yeah. I was going to ask, is. like, well, okay, so how supportive is the military while you're deployed and stuff like that? Like, how? But that I think I think we sort of touched on that a bit. Um, <laughs> you know, like they were yeah. going to make you. They're like, well, you can go back, but then you have to go right back to being deployed. <laughs> so I, I would say, oh gosh, and I feel like maybe the Air Force has changed since. You know, I think they're yeah, doing. Has. I think a they're doing has. better. I think they're kind. They're kind of realizing. Well, uh, that really messes with families, yeah. and not to mention. The, the mental health of the military the member. Health, for sure. <laughs> I think they realize that now. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Good, it sucks. Sucks, sucks, sucks. Um, yeah. And it, then, um, yeah. So then, you know, when you come back, now you got to deal with, okay, you've been away. The reintegration. So, right. Yeah. So the reintegration. And I had Vicky's aunt that was there that was looking over, you know, she would come over, help take care of Kyle. While dad supposedly went to work and oh. <laughs> she was there. Well, our family dynamic where we lived in the house, it was like heaven for her. Oh. And when I came back, it was seeming like, okay, I'm home now. You got to go. And that was like, okay, <laughs> what what was going on while I was gone? Oh. And um, so kinda we like have that whole family come back that is like, going on. Yeah. 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 Well, luckily, and I then see well, that. I came back uh, <laughs> Christmas Eve. Oh. And I came back early. They let they did let me come home early because my replacement was there. I was supposed to stay through January sixth or tenth or something. So I was missing all of the holidays, New Year's, everything that year. Well, thank God I had my replacement. Everybody was all trained, so you know I begged and begged, and they let me get you know come home. Well, then I'm dealing with um, my own issues where I came home. I was sick. I had a major UTI. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so the kids didn't even wake up yet. And I had already been into the ER and everything, oh, my. getting my meds. Wow. And then, um, so yeah, so by the time they got up, I was already back. I came back. I was in the ER, came back home. And I was just sitting there, like, hovering. My body was just, you know, just going through the changes. Oh, man. And I'm um, so stressed out. And I would literally sit in the rocking chair, and I was shaking. And then we had Christmas at the house. And so the kids were doing Christmas and all that stuff. And all the family came over. And I'm just, like, rocking and hovering, you know, trying to get through all this stress and the you know, downtime from the airplane and the time change, and and that went on for a couple of weeks. You know, just dealing with all the that stress and everything. So well, you hit it yeah. well. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, and then of course the, you know, things just weren't the same. Yeah. Um, so then it down yeah, as time went by, rolled into divorce number two. So uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know we kind of oh, touched on, you know, how the Air Force, you know, supported or maybe didn't support so much <laughs> during a deployment. But how do you feel that the Air Force supported, you know, military moms or dual military just with kids throughout your other time as active duty? Well, at the time, things weren't as like there wasn't a whole lot in place. Um, Because where I work at the Airmen and Family Readiness Center, I mean, it's changed. I've been in that building for 20 years now, and it has changed where we actually now have better support for spouses, better programs. Um, It became a big initiative for a lot of the the president's spouses and stuff um, because of the stuff that's happened over the years military has changed a lot yeah. it's not it's not even the same military that i was in right and so Sounds like think it's that. evolved <laughs> you know? yeah. right and and then the programs in the spousal preferences spousal preference what was that you know oh. we didn't i didn't even know there was an airman and family readiness center or even air force aid assistance until I started working at the Airmen and Family Readiness Center right. in 2001. I had no idea we even had that. <laughs> yeah, so 
we, so spouse yeah, preference. I don't even know what yeah. some of these things are. I mean, I, my husband has been in for almost 17 years, and I can definitely even tell the difference yeah. over these last 17 I, years, <laughs> let alone like your yeah. difference that you experienced. But even these programs you're naming off now, right, I so don't even know. So spouse preference is definitely a dual military type thing, right? So when one spouse gets stationed somewhere, they get orders, they get stationed somewhere, the other spouse who they're married to will also get orders at that base. Oh. They're going to try to yeah. like, make so sure one, you stay together. Spouse Right. So one spouse is the lead of the orders. Okay. So basically, depending, so how that works when you dual mill, depending on your AFSC, the job, um, well, and then plus the date that you, the, um, like returning home from England. Okay. Well, I'm going to use this as an example. Um, when we were coming back, we were going to be, I had to be back by July. Um, 1996 as to where my spouse because he came after because when I deployed when I when I first moved to England I went first and then I was I had two to three months to get a house get set up and then her dad um, moved with the kids and so when they got there it was all done they didn't all the yeah. stressors yeah. and stuff. Yeah, um, We showed up in England was like, yeah. oh, look, we had a house. This is great. A ready-made house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they did have a little bit of the stuff. Um, yeah. You know, so then, you know, so at least that way. But because of that, I left early. I had to leave first. And so the based on my um, job, AFSE, is how they determined where we were going to get joint spouse because right. they had to place me somewhere, but they also had to make sure there was an opening for my spouse to follow in a month or two. And so I was the lead on the orders, so they had to, you know, then see, can we place him here? Is there a job for him here? And so, you know, and then at this time, that was when we were, you know, going through our divorce but we agreed not to divorce until we came back and so um, when it came to uh, base selections our dream sheet I got all of the odds and he got the even choices and thank god I got the number one which was what brought us back to Travis which put me near my family which I had a little bit of a support system and so that was my whole point of trying to get back here and then of course dad selected more eastern coast stuff but we got here because of the mission so they were able to place me and him at travis so we got travis right. and that's how that works <laughs> so you touched on yeah. some, some of the um, afrc you know support initiatives and programs can you like elaborate a little bit more on those resources right so am in a family readiness basically is a cradle to grave type um, program. Okay. We help whatever walks through the door, put it that way. Um, <laughs> we have Air Force aid. We have financial. Can, oh, yeah. So talk we about Air Force newcomers. aid. We have newcomers. Okay. So Air Force aid is if there's a, an emergency or a need for emergency travel. Let's say uh, a parent passes away. Um, but there's, there's rules to the emergency assist. So if a grandparent dies, does the grandparent raise you? Or you just, if the grandparent died and the military member was close to them, they would fly the military member back, but not necessarily the spouse and the kids. Unless it was vice versa, the, they were raised by grandma and grandma is parents, so then they could take the whole family and help with the assist. Um, there right, could so they, be... So, um, so let's say, like, that's, that's when you're like, oh, wow, I really want to go to the funeral or whatever, but I don't have the money. So you can go right. and get Air Force aid. It's like a loan, right? Assistance, yeah. yeah. A loan, well, the, now they're looking at um, the new rules are a lot of times the emergency travel, especially if it's immediate family, they may, it, it can be converted to a, a grant. Well, that's oh. nice. So they're looking at those different options. So there's also like you, um, uh, something happened and now you're short on food or something, you know, and, and you can't do stuff deliberately to, right. 
say, well, I can't pay, you know, my, I'm trying to think, there's this bill I have to pay that comes once a year, um, but if I use my rent money to pay it, then I could go get Air Force aid. You know, it's not supposed to work that way. <laughs> so technically, you're supposed to be pre-planning and budgeting, right. and then also, it's, it's, all, it's expected to have an even an emergency fund. You should always have at least $2,000. So if the car breaks down, transmission issues, and other stuff, because when you when you buy a car, you put yourself into an obligated to where you're going to make sure you have money to get the oil changes quarterly or when it's necessary. Keep up on maintenance so the car don't break down. You know, have money so that you can replace the tires when they wear and tear. These are all the things that when you purchase something, you have to look at the overall. Yeah. Um, what is required to have this kind of like a baby right. when hey we're going to have a family <laughs> <They're not free. laughs> okay so, <laughs> Imagine that. so what what do I need to make sure well we got to have a nursery we got to have this stuff okay well you were buying a car so what if the tire blows or they're they wear down now the car's unsafe and what if it breaks down and so there's all this stuff that you need to make sure you have an emergency fund for and we find that a lot of folks don't do that. Plus, oh, the other thing the military members should be doing is at least investing 5% or whatever they can in their TSP. you got to start a retirement fund because now that they made it with the TSP and stuff, 1%, 2%, 5%, I don't care. Something needs to be going into yeah. it. That's just that's a given. Everybody needs to do a retirement fund. So when, but um, an emergency fund is a biggie. You need to at least yeah. have 2000 for emergency funds. But then if you do like me, I have another bank account that I have for our travel splurge and, you know, spontaneous yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. I so, think we got lucky you know, with your skills because I think you kind of knew well, a lot of yeah. this before you went into the Airman and Family Readiness Center, right? Like, yes, yeah, because I always pre plan for Christmas presents, yeah. and so I'd always save. Oh um, man, boy, heaven forbid, I shop all year round for you know a store's going out of yeah. um, out of business. You know what? I stocked up on Christmas presents for the next three years. Yeah, I stocked up on clothes. I always <laughs> and had somehow hit it Christmas so well. Presents. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, she hits stuff so well. We it do the so same funny. thing. We've got like these totes that are just used for gifts because I do the wow. same thing when I see stuff like Markdown or you know Mega Sales. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm stocking up for Christmas, Easter, birthdays. I, I'm loading up. That's so yeah, sweet. and but I always bought larger sizes too for clothes oh, yeah. because guess what. They're going to be in them pretty yep. soon. Yeah, they grow. They, they grow. <laughs> so I did what I could, you know, with the money I had. And so I thought ahead. I was always pre-planning ahead, um, you know, and then thinking. So that's why we had our monthly trip. So the kids would, we would pick some place and then I would save for it. Yeah. And then we would go. That's Which awesome. is so, so cool, I always tried. I would say because in England yeah. we got to see almost every castle. I feel oh like my gosh, that's I think amazing. we yeah Ugh. yeah. My mom was so, so good about yeah. like let's go, and then we're like okay. And in California, yeah, was like, let's well, go. Yeah. We got to see so many yeah. things. I don't, if you know, I was like, and and by herself, by the way, oh my like gosh. with just the two kids. We need like, that applaud button. Again. I know, I know. I was like now because like now that I'm a mom of like three kids, even when I just had two kids, going anywhere, I was like, oh my god, I have to go there by myself. I just oh. go to the grocery store. <laughs> I have to go to the commissary with yeah. my two kids by myself <laughs> you know but here my mom's like let's go to a castle you know like with my two That's kids so cool. i know she's I so that. brave i love and that just uh, yeah now so we she, drove oh, it maybe that we military drove mom. on the other side of the road we did stuff yeah, yeah. and that's Aww. the thing you just do it maybe she was just you know nice and yeah. she's such a good mom you do it. You just have to do it. I'm sorry. I don't want to mow the yard, but guess what? I learned to how to, to do a yeah. lawnmower, and I I learned. I did yeah. it. Oh, I yeah. could change sinks out. I could fix my toilet. I could fix my shower. Yeah. I could do anything, yeah. really. All I Aww. have to do is get a book Yay. or watch a YouTube video. <laughs> I will so do cool. it. Yeah. I've even gotten in and fixed things in the car. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, guess what? It works. The printer goes oh. down, or something's with the printer. My mom's Guess in what? There. Mom, yeah. come out and can you look at the printer? Because Vicky used to. Did you tell them they used to work there as one of our contractors? 
uh, I think in a roundabout way. I think I've I've mentioned it. Yeah. yeah like so, my mom kind of helped me. She's like, "Hey, look, there's a job opening. You should work." I was like, "Okay." I mean, but I also volunteered there a bunch. It just kind of felt natural. She yeah. was like training me to be her coworker. Aww. It was nice. Um, yeah. So we worked together yeah. for gosh, how many? It was like a a good couple of years, two, three years. At least. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. I know it'd be funny. People call in and I'd be like, hold on, let me, I need to ask my mom. Hold on. And we were like, <laughs> like what? Like, like, gonna, what did I just you call? Like, are you calling her <laughs> on the other line or is she in <laughs> office? <laughs> it was, so, I'm like, I'm oh, sorry. So um, oh, I need Maria. Oh, hold on. One second. One second. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, mom, you know? <laughs> I was like, sorry. I'm you were really like, bad. where am I? I'm like, so sorry. Like, what number did I just yeah, dial? Yeah, did I just call my personal? Like, I know. No, no, you did call the Urban Affairs. Right? Oh, so that's just so cool. Family-run business here. Family. Run. Anyway. Yeah. But you know what's funny? What the, what the, the other funny thing is, there were days I literally was so busy, I didn't even see Dickie there. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. he was, it's so true. I view from my office. All I had to do was, I was yeah. so busy okay. there, and I didn't even see her. I know. And it was like, it, and it was like, gosh, it wasn't like seeing, you know, being there together. I was like, there's days I don't even see her because I'm so yeah. busy. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, so fun. fun. When I, when I, when I yeah. see, like, hey, there's my mom. Oh, <laughs> that so was cute. Yeah. So, um, so let's, okay, so let's move off of the, the services from Air Force Aid, but they also do the bundles classes, baby oh, yeah. for bundles. Now that's didn't different that. now. Yeah, we like used they to, yeah, they, they used to have where we handed out stuff. We had packages that came in, but now they have like a gift card. There's a, a voucher gift card that they give the people now. So nice. you, any spouses out there pregnant, make sure you look into that, um, bundles for babies That's so cool. and they actually have new programs even through um family advocacy where they have like a new mom oh, yeah. program yeah. where a nurse actually works with you or if something she will go to your house and help you they have dad's boot camp new dad's boot camp new yeah. mom's boot camp um there's so much that is changed that teach new family members and new moms and dads things and just having the assistance um, to where man, I had no idea this stuff was out there. Well, and actually it wasn't. It was as the new generations, the, the programs evolved from looking at the needs um, and the different things that it ha- um, would happen. And then of course the initiatives of the presidential spouses and stuff and um, and or even the governors and the congressmen, the local, we've had many, many um, people come through and we would tell about the program. Mm. But, you know, not only just Air Force Aid um, programs, there's um, newcomers um, where we have the relocation. Uh, we, we have the job boards. We have the employment programs, the spouse employment. So there's a lot of... Um, help especially more so now with all of the the preferences because even the bases now have spousal preference as to where in the past they didn't Mm. um there was no spousal preference that's something that's evolved over the years um and then of course the just family life assistance um depending on what airmen and family readiness center you're at it it's depends on the workers what are they doing to uh to enhance the population or for the spouses and a lot of the programs is based individually on location because of the ideas of the people and thinking above and out of the box and stuff like that um all the way down to transitioning out helping people and that's what i did recently was you know i was the transition program manager for well, let me do it. Okay, I started out, you know, as the readiness NCO, being there as active duty. So I was there helping and keeping, making sure I was there to assist spouses when the members deployed. And then yeah. I went from the readiness NCO when I retired. I was hired back on, so I did financial counseling for about six to nine months, and yeah. then I rolled into being the Air Force Aid officer. Then from the Air Force aid officer, I was the transition program manager. And then from there, I went to the employment manager. So 
you pretty all these much years. did everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you have to know enough of you have to know everybody's job because when you're working intake or if somebody calls on the phone, you got to know enough. Right. So you pretty much know everything in there. Um, and now I'm getting ready to retire. Well, I'm not retiring. I'm. Um, I can retire, but I want to wait to collect my full amount. Yeah. So I resigned. So I moved into Tennessee. And so right now I'm, I've got four weeks left working at the Airman and Family Readiness Center. Whoop. And then we're moving to Tennessee. Whoop, whoop. Yay! You know, I was thinking, though, like, imagine you knew about, like, the Airman and Family Readiness Center, like, a long time ago. And maybe if you had popped in there and see if they had advice on, like, you know, like, getting out. Yeah, other stuff. You know, or, like, yeah. God, I just imagine, you know, I mean, because people know yeah. they well, can pop in there and they can ask about, like, okay, well, like, what are my options? Anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I mm, imagine, anything. like, I wonder what would have happened. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you did it. But, you know, like, if they well, were, like, the good thing was, getting you, you know, I Well, the, you know, the one thing is, is I was working the, the, in the Airmen and Family Readiness Center when it came time to retire. Yeah. And I was scared to death because <laughs> I was a single mom yeah. with three kids. And, I uh, literally kids felt like I was cold in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I literally felt like I was holding the hands of all my kids and we were getting ready to jump off a cliff. Ooh. It was a free fall. I was so scared. No job, no so nothing. Scary. You know, I didn't know what I was going to do. And, you know, and I was went on terminal leave and I was, you know, working on finding a job, finding a job. And thank God, you know, I, I did get hired for one job. It was working at the drug and demand retention area where the military members go in and pee. But then I got the offer to uh, come back to the Airmen and Family Readiness Center and be a financial counselor to help with the financial folks. And so I took that. So I got to come right back to where I worked. So, so that was once that got sealed, the the deal was sealed and everything. And so I retired one May 05 and then I was working again, 16 May 05. So I had 16 I days. I was just doing the overlap, but it was, but my terminal leave, I was on terminal leave from February to May. And that's when I was really panicking and scared, but the kids didn't know. No, we had no idea. She you know, masks so. it so well, you know, she's just yeah. like, huh, you know, I'm retiring. <laughs> yeah, things will be fine. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, we're like, you, you, you can't you know? them, though. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we had no idea. I mean, like, I mean, I think at that time we had our, you know, we were trying to just do high school and you know, trying to graduate. Yep. And it was like, yeah, apply to college. Even though I think my mom was probably like, I don't know how you're going to pay for this. So <laughs> good luck. But you know, yeah, you need to go to yeah. college, you know, until we figured out that, you know, the benefits. Yeah. Were pretty awesome. and, then the, and then that's <laughs> when, you know, once I retired and became official veteran status, um, the state of California has, if you go to any state college or community, your tuition is waived for the kids. So the kids were, they went to college tuition free and they went to UC Davis all four years. Well, and then it really did help, um, through all the injuries that I had occurred over the years. Um, there's that other process that the military members when they apply for their VA disability, because normally when you're working in any job and you get hurt, you can file for workman's compensation right. and you get to go home and heal and, and whatever. Well, military, you can't, you're on a waiver or you're whatever. And so, but you still got to work and it, are your injuries really going to heal? No. So they have the VA disability process. And so I went through my process um, and the different things. And I remember getting my, package in the mail and I opened it up and I immediately sat down and the I Vicky was right there. It's like what? What? I was like, oh my God, I got rated a hundred percent. So having that a hundred percent disability opened up many other doors yeah. for other programs right, because yeah. not only did the kids got the um, tuition waiver they now have their own little GI Bill. 
And so they qualified for Chapter 35. So the way I look at it, mom had to get injured and <laughs> paying for the price today. So for my kids to be able to go to college tuition free and all that stuff, so I've got to pay for it with my health for the Ugh. rest of my life. So, Aww, I know. but anyway, so Sucks. they had their, Moms so she was stop. able to go. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the love that keeps on giving. Yes. So, um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Vicki got to go to college and she got a stipend yeah. and then, um, while she was in school, but then she still worked a small part-time job to where she was able to make it and move out and live in an apartment and stuff. So she was able to do that. And, um, so that was helpful. So the kids were able to go to school and, um, you know, right now our younger brother, he's using the benefits in Michigan, um, to get his training. And then her brother's been using it off and on, but, he has his own GI Bill because he was able to join the military. So yeah. um, he joined and got out. So he has his own benefits. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I know. It should be like a recruiting yeah. ad right it's, now. <laughs> yeah. It's just you have to respect it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, I, I tell people, you know, because I come across a lot of young people and or folks that don't know. Because you can actually still join the military up to 38 or 39. Right. And if you're having that much trouble and you're struggling and you've got family and there's no way you're going to be able to afford a lot of these medical bills and you're not really, you don't have a career, join the military. Even if it's just the four years, get the the benefits under your belt, get something so that you can have a future for your kids, something. Um, But then a lot of folks, you know, military is not for everybody, you know. But it's a good place to start to at least get general benefits so you can go to school and actually yeah. maybe get a career, not a job, a career. Yeah. And, and that's the difference. Right. Is a lot of folks, you know, these fast food jobs, yeah, they're jobs. Yeah. But if you get into management and stuff, now those are careers. Uh-huh. But there, there's a difference between jobs and careers, and that's what people need to realize. There, You've got to line yourself up and set yourself up so you can eventually position yourself for a career and to help position the kids. But, uh, you know, folks need to be talking to their kids and planning. You know, I have parents that they get these benefits, but these kids, they still want to go to another state and go to school over at this other state, but they don't give the benefits like California. And I'm like, why? Yeah. Why does that kid want to go there? We've got excellent colleges here in California. If it's a college, I'm actually a trade school person right now because I don't like what's going on in colleges and the, you know, brainwashing, if you want to call it that. But um, I just, I'm all for all these trade schools and learn a career and get working. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but feel good about yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. That is such awesome, so, like, awesome advice for parents, for military members, for those who just, you know, might feel lost. And I mean, hearing, hearing everything that you've shared with us and especially the sacrifices that you have given as a mom, I mean, would you still recommend military life for, for anyone, especially a mom? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you, you need that. You get support. The friends that you make in the military, you can't beat it. No, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> yeah. the, the the bureaucracy, you get, you have the same thing in the private sector. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, it's the same game. It's the same, you know, you'll have good bosses, bad bosses, good employees, good coworkers, bad, you know. It's all the same, but at least you get benefits. Yeah. You're actually... <laughs> You know, positioning yourself to where you can walk out with something, a GI Bill, veteran benefits for kids that they stay in California. Um, there's a lot of other stuff, but you get on the job training. You can actually learn enough, but sometimes four years isn't long enough, especially jobs that, you know, were supervision. And um, so that way That's they true. get supervisory skills. There is nowhere in the local community where you're going to be put into supervisory skills at the young age that yeah. we get put into as a military member. That's true, um, true. We get yeah. these young yeah. 20 year olds, 21, 22 year olds, and they're running these programs, supervising other people. Yeah. 
you don't find that out right. in the private sector. Yeah, the military you know, trains people you, to be leaders. It's yeah. I mean, they just that's just that's how they grow you, and they're like, okay, we're training the next mm-hmm. leader, you mm-hmm. know, and then they just. A new wave comes in, all right, you're our next leaders, and then the other one's just, right. just keeps going up. And they oh, position oh, you for it as yeah. to where the private sector, you have to really stay in your lane. Um, yeah, or because Well, the other thing the military the does, yeah. So the other thing the military does is, you know, we have that catch-all phrase, you know, I told you to do it, so do it. So <laughs> even if you don't know what to do, more stripes don't pick do up it. a book <laughs> and read and figure it out. You know, yeah. they give you a task and I don't know, I've never done it. Well, neither have I, go figure it out. You know, these are the skills that we get, we get, we get taught. We can do anything. And that's why when I, you know, interview or, you know, do jobs, I don't sit and I, well, I can't do that. I don't know. I can't do that. You know, I so I just <laughs> go figure it out. Go get a book, read, video. I can do anything. It's not that I'm arrogant or anything. That's what I've learned. You know, I I trust myself. Yeah. And then yeah, I get a job if you don't have yeah. money oh. and you can't afford it, you know, I'm like, then it looks like I'm doing it myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even if you mess it up and you do it wrong the first time, you pick yourself back up, you know, put your boots back on and you go out and do it again. <laughs> you just do it. You figure it out. That's what you do. I think you missed your calling as a BMT instructor because <laughs> I feel like you just need to go and you need to tell them how to get it done. Or a recruiter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Motivational but, speaker. Um, I don't know. I think you have a... She's, a, a well, she's I do like life motivational speaking. Ooh, right? You're <laughs> like, well, I got that. I've gotten certified. That yeah. too. Yeah. You're a, a life, you know, we got our, life we got our certification, certification yeah. for our work life. You know, life coaches, I'm a certified resume writer, and hey, really? why not, you know? I know. My mom does everything. That yeah. is amazing. She's awesome. You've, like, totally inspired me today. <laughs> I had really no idea about all this. I mean, I, I knew a little bit about you, you know, and I, I've heard stories in Victoria, but now I'm, like, feeling like yeah. my, my she's superwoman like cape. Every, I know, she's, like, expert on everything. I'd be like, oh, man, I need help with this. I'll call mom. <laughs> she's, like, legit an expert on all these things. <laughs> you know? That meme really hits hard with you, right, Victoria? Yeah, yeah. I need help, call mom. Need help, yeah. call mom. <laughs> Well, and, and you know what else? If you don't know how to do it and you're doing it for the first time, you fake it. You make it look like you know what you're doing and you do it and nobody knows any yeah. different. Right. you just like, you, yeah, just, I don't you know, know, I just own it. You just own, <laughs> just it. own it. That's yeah. the thing. Own it. Yeah. And you don't let them know that you're sweating underneath, Aww. that you don't know what you're doing. You know, I, yeah, so I just read the instructions. Yeah, I'm following the instructions. Who cares? I'm making sure I don't miss a step. I'm not telling them this is the first time I ever touched it. I'm like, yeah. I'm owning it. I, do, I know what I'm doing. Raise the book over my shoulder. Yeah, That's you know, so cranking it down. <laughs> I'm not afraid to go grab some tools and stuff. And, That's good. you know, That's I'm so not in cool. there helping my husband remodel the house the best I can <laughs> <laughs> it's like not only do you wear that superwoman cape like to its finest but it's like bedazzled it's got oh, like it's decked it. out yes. and you know gems and rhinestones and oh. it is it's gold and oh my goodness I know it's just, that's awesome yep. that's so awesome and guess what? <laughs> what guess what the best gift of all this is what I've got my grandbaby. Oh, Aww. yeah. I was like, what? what is it? I know. So I was like, she bypassed gonna... you, Victoria, and said she's got the grandbaby. She's like, I got grandbabies. This is the best. I've I got eight grandbabies. Yeah. I love my grandbabies. And that's my next calling. I love my, you know, I, I love them. Grandma. I just yeah. like to do things. And, you know, that's why I can't wait for when Corey retires and they're going to build a house on the property. She's got it planned up. She's got her 20-year plan already and, done, you know. It's oh, it's funny. already in yeah. motion. That's yeah. the thing. It's already I know. in motion. I know. She's like, well, here's the plan. And we're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you can't say no to She puts them. those military boots <laughs> right back on and you're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> she outranks us. We got to do this. I know. <laughs> you want to know, you know what's funny yeah. is, I always had a saying, do you need an attitude adjustment? Oh, that's the perfect, oh my gosh. Like growing up and I tell and, you what, you stand yeah. at attention. I mean, imagine like a five-year-old standing at attention. Oh, that gosh. is exactly what we did. That 
That is the best military mom move ever. Dude, you we were the best. An attitude adjustment. I, I really think we were the best kids in the world, but it's probably because my mom was like not playing around. Okay. Like we knew. Yeah. We're like, this woman means business. Okay. Oh, like, yeah, you know, one of my. Dude. Like if you were seen... saying. Okay. What's the other one? Because I was about One to... of my other sayings. If you don't quit that, I'm going to put my boots so far up your butt, you're going to taste the leather. That was classic. <laughs> Classic. So yeah, it was. Those were her go tos, and we knew. Okay, all right. Well, this was is serious. a time to like. Yes, it was. Serious. Be quiet, <laughs> like, and be good. It was. I mean, but or you, stand at attention. Let mm-hmm. me share. <laughs> let me share a little secret though. When these, when Mark and Vicky were little, and the cute little hair and the little ringlets, and Vicky had her little ruffled panties. You know, those little lacy ruffled <laughs> panties that you wear under the dress and stuff. And Marco had, I could not cut Mark's hair either. So he had beautiful long, you know, blonde hair with the ringlets and, and they would get in trouble and I'd chase him down the hallway and I would just be like, <laughs> I'm going to get you, buddy. I'm going to thank you. But I could not help but laugh because I'm watching these two little butts wiggle and the hair just flip <laughs> we flop around. Just... <laughs> and, and so, but I had the whole that, you know, that moment of, you know, I'm disciplining you. But boy, I was like, oh my God, aren't they so cute? <laughs> and meanwhile, oh, my brother and I made it to one and room and we're trying to barricade this door, <laughs> right? These little kids were like, oh my God, mom's going to kill us, you know? And like, we're trying to barricade this door like, as if we would actually be able to hold back from my mom, okay? Like, she's a beast, right? But uh, she's crazy. I don't know. But we have thought, <gasps> but I tell you what, it only took one attitude adjustment. I got to, you know, I got to pull yeah. that out on my kids. I'll be like, mm, I think you need an attitude adjustment. But I just don't think it's going to be the same. I, I try to give them <laughs> no, crazy. No, it's not. Guys. That's why yeah. I tell people, I like, tell mom, about... do I got to call grandma? And yeah. does grandma have to come over and do this? And it works because it works with my sister's kids. She mm, used that all the that. time. I'm going to call Aunt Maria. Oh, that's, and right. he, that's the truth. You know, he only had so one it attitude was... adjustment. <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> it only takes one. Okay. <laughs> it only takes one. And I was like, oh. It was a doozy. Yeah. I was like, oh, you don't. You in it now. Man. I was like, it was. Anyway. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Advice for you moms out there. I, know. <laughs> I don't know. Get yourself a military mom friend. Who yeah. And just like lay it's down. Like, I don't know. What is it? Like nanny 911 or yeah. whatever it's called. No, it's going to be like military mom 911. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I've had other times where like a coworker, her kids were crazy and we were at um, my friend's, my other coworker, my uh, friend's house, Jay's, and we did holiday over there and the, my coworker's kids were like running all over the place. This isn't even their house and it's a mess and they, they're doing stuff. And I had to, I, yeah, I pulled the kids <laughs> over and had a little attitude talk with them and you know and they were like thank you you know and uh, yeah. her daughter Catherine still remembers you know oh, yeah. it, and they're like do I gotta call Maria over you know it's like no <laughs> but those kids it's like whoo yeah, it's like what. somebody had to because the parents weren't I know yeah. it's yeah. like so come on parents take ownership of your kids yeah. don't embarrass you know, the pay if you're at somebody else's house, don't leave it up to somebody else. I try to be so nice. You know, even in grocery stores or department stores, when I hear a kid crying, and throwing, starting to throw a temper tantrum, I go up and say, what's wrong? What's going on? And, of course, now a stranger's talking to them. So now all of a sudden they shut up and they're so cute and embarrassed <laughs> and they're trying to hug and get their face to far up under mommy's arm as they can. And I'm like, uh huh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. You know, it's like the just go up cut. and talk to them. Oh, go up God. and talk to a kid if they're, you know. Okay, if you're but a grandma, now some kids, <laughs> like, I, like, yeah, I don't know. So, <laughs> like, not if you're, you creepy. know, now the ones that are having major <laughs> blowout temper tantrums yeah, in a, a department store. I don't know. Maybe you got to get down on the floor. I've been seeing that more and more because you know, with the autistic kids, oh, yeah. you don't know when they're going to have. Now that was a whole nother issue. Autism you know, at Disney World, mm-hmm. you know, where grandma said something and the people changed their tune oh, yeah. real quick. Yeah. So, I know that that's um, a good story. But, 
I was like, oh, Grandma saved yeah, the day. Yeah, you tell that story. Okay, you all tell right. That Why story. not? We have a minute. No, just <laughs> uh, yeah. So, <laughs> man. Um, so my husband was deployed, and my mom's like, "I'm gonna come to visit." She was the best at like, coming to visit and help me out while my husband was deployed. It was just the best. It was like, "Yay, Grandma's coming!" It's almost like, almost like, "Hey, Corey, when are you gonna deploy so Grandma can come <laughs> hang out?" You know, and take us to Disney World. Okay, so my mom was like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, we're gonna take you to Disney World." I don't know. It was the bestest ever, but. Um, yeah, so my two boys were diagnosed with autism and we decided to like brave Disney World. They do have a program that we found out later to help you or help families with kids with autism, but we didn't know about that then. Anyway, my kids have a meltdown of sorts. You know, it was all about sharing a donut. One wanted a donut. The other one wanted a donut. I only had one donut. Try to split this donut in half. That did not go well for the one kid. The one kid was like fine with it, but the one kid was like, ah, dying, I'm going to die. Nah. The kind of tantrum was just like hell raising. I might Aww. as well, you know, it was yeah. just, it was embarrassing. It was just like, oh my gosh, we're right in the middle of everybody's look, you know, everybody just kind of like looks at you and they're like, wow, you're like a horrible mom. You know, you just, I mean, you just get those looks. They just don't understand. Yeah, so, anyway. So let me add a little bit. So I'm watching the people well i'm trying to defuse a bomb (laughs) all right like i'm defusing the kid i'm watching (laughs) right and i see a man talking to his wife or whatever whoever and he does that you know slap motion like he's slapping in into his other hand kind of like if that was my kid i would just you know i was so mad i saw that and i went up to him and i said you know what if you had our two autistic kids, I you'd be you know talking a different tune, and and I went off on them. How dare you motion that you would slap the kid? Yeah, you I can't hit a kid with autism. An autistic kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you can't punish an autistic kid. Boy, they changed their tune after. Yeah, that was there. You go. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah. I, I mean, I was still trying to defuse a bomb, but I was like, yeah, mom, yeah. Get up, yes. You're so, like taking out your earrings, yeah, pushing up your sleeves. You're like, oh, I got it, I got I it. I know. You just. Wait. You just wait until like this. Rolling up my arm sleeve. Oh god! I was ready to take down. I was gonna go down. You want a sloppy match? Let's have a sloppy match. You know, I'm not. You aren't gonna get near my grand boys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know. I know. Yeah. But Uh, yeah, no, it's just all life. Yeah, life. But people need to pause. Oh yeah. They need to. There's so many things to look at now. You know, when kids are having issues and the parents. It's different. It, a lot of things are different. You know, you have more things available that I didn't have available when I was a kid. Yeah. I mean, I'm the baby of five, and that's probably a lot of what's going on. But we never did. Boy, my dad, when he looked at us and my mom, we knew it. Mm. He did not get out of line in a grocery store. Department, and we all went together. Wow. There was no staying home. His dad was at work, and we all went with mom, and we went shopping. We went everywhere. Boy, you did not. You had your, you held on to your part of the basket. There was no jumping all over the basket and swinging. And, you know, we had, we held it, and we walked with it. And mm-hmm. it was like, I sit back, and I think on, what the heck? You know, you can't even get kids to, <laughs> no. you know, hold on without jumping on it on the front, on the side. Yeah. Or you have to give them your phone. Over, you know? <laughs> yes. Here, here yeah. here's my phone. Here, please. You savage. Yeah, boy, the look, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And... I don't know, boy. But when you talk about the look from the back in the day, it's mm. like, I don't know. You just don't. That don't work for kids these days. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd have to say that's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, goodness, I don't know. we talked about a lot more than I thought we did, <laughs> and I'm awesome. so happy. I know. I was like, I was like, well, let's talk about being a mom, and, the, and we talked about way more. We talked about your know, career building. I know. And, I have like I a million even, more yeah. questions for you. We're gonna have to like it. plan another interview for sure because you definitely like have such. Well, she's an expert on everything. I was gonna say you so. have such a wide range of knowledge, <laughs> and my like my mind is still blown from like you know, been at like four going into this and now we're at, you know, an hour four and I'm like, wow, wow, yes. wow, wow. It's so true. So, I'm so going to, yeah. yeah. I got a lot of stories. Yeah. Yeah. Of, I know. Lots I know. of life experience. 
experience. Yes. You know, I think it, there's a lot of life experience. And when you, you touch on one, you can go down that rabbit hole. Oh yeah. So there I you think go. that's what happened. We went down a couple of different, that's okay. You know? that, <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's just, what this is all about. So thank though, you for coming like, on our journey. <laughs> 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 we are notorious for not having like a schedule and staying on task around here. And that's yeah. perfectly fine. I think that's what makes it a great conversation. Hey, that's just all right. Let it flow. Just call me up. You don't know what to talk about. I'll just go off. <laughs> I'll just say, you need, you got some dead time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's fun. Well, yeah, I think we Yeah, might. and then we can talk after I do my Tennessee trip and find in a house. That's a whole nother, you know, we can talk about, you know, everything mm. we do, buying a house and you're looking and all that. So, you know, hey. Yeah. There you go. We got yeah. future topics. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. I know it. I knew it. Well, Mommy, thank you so yeah. much. Um, yeah, we appreciate you're your welcome. time. I know. I, gosh. Yeah. And a happy... It was fun having a good cry, too. Oh. You know, oh, you forget I, that know. Time. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, why? Why, Mommy? <laughs> no, <laughs> why I have to tie yeah. my heartstrings like that? Uh. No, that's great. That's <laughs> yeah. great. I'm yeah. glad you guys Yeah, that was 99, 2000. So we're talking about... <laughs> That's 20 so, years ago, you know, oh, we stop. had to open that can of worms again. I know it. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love you, Mama. I love you, too. We'll All talk right. later. Yeah. Thank love you so you. much. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>